to be totally honest, I did a lot of open gastrox and uh, dragged my feet for quite a while. Had some concerns about doing it endoscopically, but the last several years I've been doing them endoscopically, and I'll show you the reasons why I switched and why I would highly encourage you to consider it. Uh, reason number one, this is a common area. This is a place that people see, especially females. And if you get something like this, this was six months out. This is the actual case that tipped me. Uh, she just hated it. It was tenting. I always closed the deep fascia with some absorbable suture, but still she ended up with some, some adhesion of the subcutaneous tissue to the soleus. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to try this endoscopic. So cosmetics is not the reason that we make a lot of decisions, but it is sometimes, it does sometimes play a, a part in patient satisfaction. So that's reason number one. Reason number two, it's easier. A lot of the procedures we do with a gastroc are supine, not all of them, but a lot triples, uh, flat foot reconstruction, lapidus, and uh, I find this is a lot easier unless you're, you know, frog-legging the leg, trying to hold it off to the side or hold it in the air or try to do it from a small incision from the medial side and hope you get everything laterally. So I like this. I can keep the patient directly supine and it simplifies the positioning. Reason number three, it's faster. Less time in the OR for the patient, cost savings to the patient, and they get off the table quicker. And oftentimes we're combining it, like I said, with more complicated, longer procedures. So anything we can do to speed it up when you're done, simply two little stitches in the skin and you're out. So definitely has, has made this a little quicker. And the most important reason, reason number four, less complications. So this came out in 2018, 40 open versus 40 endoscopic. And the open group had 26% complication rate. Endoscopic had 2%. And so there was a significantly difference um, in the lower uh, complication rate in the endoscopic group. And so that really backs up the, the reason to consider doing this endoscopically. So the endoscopic gastric recession, just to summarize the reason why, cosmesis, take it for what you want. Simplified positioning, that's been nice. It cuts down my OR time, that has been nice, but the big thing for patients is less complications. The endo blade is the kit that provides everything you need to do this in the OR. So it's a transparent cannula, and I'll show you why that's been very nice. It's a dual portal system. <laughs> and it's an all-inclusive kit. This is what it looks like. The cannula, the obturator, everything comes in the kit along with cotton swabs. Dual portal's nice because you can follow the cut and nothing's obscuring the view as opposed to a camera hooked and pushing it. So I like the dual portal. Okay, this was really my big holdup and, and this may be one of your reasons um, for not doing this, um, the sural nerve. So there is variation. We know it lies in different areas, just a little over 10%. It's lying actually on the aponeurosis. About 40%, it's lying outside the deep fascia, and 45% it's lying just underneath. So the variation, well, okay, that's, that's a problem. I don't want to get in there with a scope, but let me show you a few things. If you put the clear cannula in, and you, don't, and you inspect along the aponeurosis, and you don't see anything, you're fine. Like the, the, the image on the left, and you don't see the nerve, it's probably that percentage almost half the time where it's outside the fascia. Because it's a clear cannula, you can switch the, ca switch the camera around and look posteriorly and you can visualize the nerve there and document it and I'll show you that. And if it's lying on the aponeurosis, you can also see it. You get a nice view. You're not in this metal tunnel that you can't see much. This clear cannula shows you where the nerve is. If it's right behind the cannula, you know you're safe. You can document that the, the nerve was visualized, it was protected behind the camera. You can do a nice release and, and full co feel confident that you have uh, not caused any problems with the sural nerve. That really was my biggest holdup. And I, I honestly, over several years, have not had issues with the sural nerve, but I think this cannula makes a big difference for me. The technique is a couple of centimeters below the inferior border of the gastroc. And I actually go about a centimeter in front of that border. I usually try to start on the medial side. I usually take a, a hemostat across first, just gently, and then I insert the cannula. There's a couple of cotton swabs. This works with a dry scope. Here's the deep fascia. So if you put it in and you move the foot up and down and you see the aponeurosis moving and there's still a layer of tissue there, the kit comes with a little dissector tool. And I almost always, I, I never hit it perfect in the right plane exactly. I put it in and then I use this little tool which is beveled on one side. You start on one side and it actually works its way through the tissue very nicely underneath the deep fascia. And then you basically use this as a switch stick. So you pull it out and put the cannula back in in the right plane. Here you go, the sural nerve is sitting in front of the cannula. What do you do? Two options, pull it out, go to an open if you want, or you can actually use this little dissector tool to just gently go in front of it, work your way across, and uh, you can see there's the beveled edge. You can see I'm still in the not, not yet in the right plane on this far side, and so just keep working your way underneath that deep fascial layer, and you can establish very in a simple, very easy way, um, a switch stick principle to put the cannula in the right plane. So I like that little tool. 
Actually, when I pull out the cannula, I'll take that little switch stick and I'll just kind of gently move it up and down and just create a nice little pocket there and put the cannula back in below the deep fascia and well away from the nerve. And then do final, a final inspection before we release. Just run that dissector tool just along the fibers and you can see I'm safe and ready to do the release. It's a very sharp, little gentle dorsiflexion. You should see the underlying soleus muscle belly and you can do a half or a full release and get a nice recession here and a couple stitches and you're done. <laughs> At first, it, it, I will be honest, it took me a little bit of time in the very beginning to, to adjust, but now it's very fast, and I'm super happy that I made the switch. So key take-home points with the uh, endoscopic gas rock, you can do it supine. That's been nice. You leave the deep fascia intact. There's no herniation or, or uh, risk of that subcutaneous adhesion or skin tenting. It is cosmetic. That's a great thing. Uh, I see less post-op pain, and the clear cannula really has made a difference when being cautious and careful of the sural nerve, and I see less complications. Just a little side note about the plantar fascia release system. This is very similar. It's a similar kit. Uh, the handles are actually leveraged. They're angled to give you a little more leverage as you release this. A close-up look at the blades. These are very sharp. They spend a lot of time really trying to sharpen these uh, and give us the sharpest blades possible to do it. I'm sure you've all probably done this. You outline the anatomy. I'll just show you a case example. This patient had over six months of conservative treatment. And when I got the MRI, which I frequently do, is trying to make sure there's not a neurological component or anything else and make sure it's true plantar fasciosis. She had eight and a half or millimeters of thickening, indicating that this was truly her source of pain. And so we did an endoscopic plantar fascia release. This is the kit ready to go on the back table. Make a small incision on the medial side and just establish a plane right under the fascia. The, the probe exits the lateral side well below the sural nerve and insert the cannula, it slides over that very easily and insert the scope. Sometimes when you get in there, you see some tissue lying on the fascia. The kit comes with a rasp so you can clear that off and see a little bit better. And then just basically elicit the windless mechanism, measure for the release however much you like to do. I usually insert the scope from the lateral side and come in medially. There's a little herniation of tissue that I find right there that gives me just about the right amount of tissue to release. Uh, the medial portion and see the underlying intrinsics. Sometimes you have to make a couple passes. You know, this is thick chronic disease fasciosis and so sometimes you have to come back and make a couple passes but the blades are very sharp this thick tissue it cuts through very nicely and then just a picture confirming that you went deep enough a couple stitches and you're done this is a patient that I obtained an MRI after <coughs> excuse me afterwards for other reasons and you can see on the medial side the release but the lateral band is left intact and that's important for the success of course for this procedure my post-op protocol is pretty simple i let them walk in two to three days in a boot i think it's important to leave them in a boot especially at night to maintain stretch out keep them at 90 degrees i like to transfer them out of the boot <clears throat> into regular shoes around two to four weeks i just don't want this to tighten up if you leave them non-wavering or in a cast or a boot for quite a while i think this has a chance of, of healing in tight so i like to keep the stretch out and allow them to re return to regular activity around six to eight weeks so in summary, reasons I like the endoscopic or the uh, endo blade for both these procedures, especially the plantar fascia, the angled handles give you a little more leverage. The clear cannula is very nice, better visualization. Both of these are a little more cosmetic, which gives you the patient perception that this is, you know, that, that plays a part, that this is um, minimally invasive, it, it is often perceived well, that they're going to do well. The blades are very sharp, and I like that they're dual portal. I see a little better visualization and feel I can do the procedure uh, better that way. So. Great procedures. I would encourage you to try this if you haven't. It's been a, a nice thing to offer my patients. Thank you.